All right, my friends, Sunday sessions, neutrino news you can use. Really glad that you're here. You should be seeing on my screen today, it's January 10th, 2021. It is 8 a.m. here in beautiful, sunny, a little bit cold though, it's northern Arizona. You can see it's a six line day. That's not for much longer though. A couple more hours and we'll be in gate 61, line one. One of my favorite gates of all time. But today we're going to be talking about a six line quality day since it is that right now. Welcome to everyone who's here with me. I see you all and I'm really grateful. If you do have any questions or comments that you would like to share with me, um, I will check the Q&A box at the end. So if you want to post a question, that would be great. I'm going to turn off my chat though so you guys can chat with each other and hopefully I won't get too distracted by it if you want to, of course. So what we're looking at on six line days is that it's a great day for role modeling on six line days happy six line day to you it's a good day for rest Ra would say as far as you know not really being active you're more detached you're more aloof you're more observant when you're a six line personality so six line days when we look at the transits what I want you to primarily look at is the line value first because again remember this is 70 percent of the energy stream that is streaming through us right now right? Because most of the neutrinos come from the sun. And where that energy, those neutrinos are grounded in is in the opposite side where the gate, uh, the earth, the gate activation opposite in the mandala wheel is going to be. So when we look at transits, if there's not a global conditioning pattern, meaning there's not a channel defined between two centers, then this is a really important place to look out for. So I'll always give you a little synopsis of what a six line is about. On six line days, it's a great day for role modeling, for walking your talk, Perhaps you might say, do as I say, not as I do. You know, a little bit of hypocrisy there. That's just all natural qualities of what a six line is about. Six line days are days when mm, we have more of this energy of not really being um, down in the bottom of things. We're not researching and investigating first line. We're not naturally expressing something second line. We're not trial and erroring third line. We're not trying to influence people fourth line. We're not trying to send a message out there fifth line. No, the sixth line is detached from all of that business. Now let's talk a little bit about what these gate activations are. They're really, really important gate activations. Here we have beginning things, gate 53, the start gate of things. Here's a start codon, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But where we're grounding uh, that energy of ambition, which is gate 54, is in beginning things. So have you noticed that you've had the energy to begin things this week? I sure have. Have you noticed that I began something this past week and I've had a lot of energy to develop it? Balanced and cyclical development. I have the gate 42 on the other side. So what happened? I created this site and we have something new here. When we look at courses, just wanted to announce that, that the Introduction to the Human Design System course is open. So for newcomers to the experiment, what I noticed last week when I went through the transit report, I was like, wow, we have a lot of people in here that may be brand new to human design and don't know anything about it yet. So first things first, I like to get to the bottom of things, foundational elements. This course right here, much of it I wrote in 2016 for Jovian Archive. I went through this week and updated all of what I've written and broke it out into pieces. So it's there for you if you would like to join. It's free. If you would like to join and learn more about the human design system, a lot of it's written content. Um, all images for the most part are Jovian archives. I do work for Jovian archive. I do have permission to repost my content that I wrote from them um, when we were writing the new website back in 2016. And there's also some videos of me teaching about different aspects of human design. So I'll keep fleshing that out as we go, but it's, it's good enough for now to get a good solid basis of understanding if you're brand, brand new to the system, okay? Now, what we're looking at as well, when we look at, um, as an example, I'm always gonna give you my personal example of understanding the transits because I'm a personal perspective person. I can't help but teach that way. And I happen to have the other sides of this stream of capitalism 
that we have going on right now. So the way that I'm fitting into the transits is, wow, now I have the energy to create something that's truly transformative for my tribe. Now I have the awareness and energy to be able to create something that maybe can convince people, persuade them off of Facebook. Now I have the energy, the drive and stamina to be able to make money potentially with this new endeavor. So that's my experience of having aspects of the stream of capitalism this week. That's my experience. So what I do when I go through these transits, I want to invite and encourage you to look at your own designs. I'm going to go through all of the activations from the perspective of what do you have and what does the transit have? And this is maybe what it shows up like. And it's going to be an experiential journey every week where we walk through the body graph and I'm going to give you my personal stories. And if you have something that you'd like to share in the group, wherever this video will be posted, that's where I'd like to hear from you. Or if you create your own, you know, blog on the um, forum itself, if you create your own uh, piece you know, wherever you want to create it. I'm not sure how that works yet. Please do let me know if you find something that doesn't work, that's broken, of course, because I want to be able to help fix that. Um, and also if something feels like, you know, it would really would be great if we could do this, Lavina, because I don't know how this new website works quite yet. I'm doing my best trial and erroring it through. And um, yeah, I just want to have it be a co-creative space so that you guys have a place to be able to meet with each other and talk with each other. When we're talking about making money, that's a big thing that's on the table. Why? Because the nodal environment nodal environment. This is the north node and the south node. Past direction, south node, future direction or perspective, north node. Okay, so everybody on the whole planet is being bombarded by neutrinos that are going through these two activations within the body graph where we're talking about making money. We're talking about how do we be the best so that we can support our tribe to survive? How do we convince things? How do we manipulate memory? This is a memory gate, gate 26, part of the memory circuit. And where are we moving towards? We're moving towards being in included in a material process. So we have a lot of people looking out there going, uh, what do we have? Who has what? Do we have the best? Do they have the best? How can we be the best? How can we have more on the material plane? How can we survive? This is about survival. Anytime you look at the, the splenic center, it's about being able to survive and work for it. Cause this is about what you do for work in the tribe. How do we support each other? How do we care for each other is on the menu. So you might have noticed a lot more of this, okay, they have more than I have. You know, comparison, comparison, comparing, <laughs> comparing what you have and what you think you should have and what we all need to have. We have this global stage of having or have nots. And you know, maybe those people over there have too much and how come we don't have enough? All of that, have you guys noticed that? That's what's on the menu, okay? So that's part of how we're all being, um, you know, convinced that we need to see these things in a particular way. Now, when we look at the rest of the body graph, everything else is nuances and subtleties. The, the main activations are the top two sun and earth because that's 70 percent and then the nodal environment is where did all of this stellar background field energy and all of this solar movement where did it all come through it came through these two points and that's why it f it frames our relationship with what we see how we're experiencing things. What is the topic of conversation? Ra used to say that he um, would love to turn on the news and just hear the keynotes flowing out of people. And you'll find when you start to get study into design, you'll start to recognize, oh my gosh, this past week, everybody's been talking about ambition, gate 54. Everybody's been wanting to transform their circumstances and rise up to be able to have more on the material plane. That's the transit. That's the program. Now the program is not your life. So what I'm going to do now is start to walk you through the body graph like I did last week. If you weren't here, I'm just going to speak the keynotes of 
the design of what's going on in the transits and hopefully give you a better basis of understanding in comparison to your human design chart. So what I want to do right now is to invite you to please get out your human design body graph. If you don't have your body graph, you can go to my body graph. You can download that image and you can print it out for these sessions. I do recommend that if you take any classes from me or if you do this kind of transit work, that you at least have your body graph in front of you, not on your phone, but in front of you on a piece of paper if you can. Now, um, if you're, you know, listening to this as you're driving or whatever it is, you know, you don't have the time to do it now. Maybe you do it next time. So for next time, okay? Yes, they do need to join the site in order to be a part of the intro course, Carol. It's, it's something that they have to request because I'm not making it open to everybody. Um, the requests to join our site do get read personally by me and um, it might take me some time to get to it, but I, I do read everybody because I want to see what you guys are wanting from a site and make sure that this is helpful and useful for everybody. And, um, you know, I just want to make a, a quick shout out to everybody who commented as far as what you want from this site and all of the messages I've got about um, thanking me for creating the site out of, you know, away from Facebook and such. I'm really grateful too that um, there's enough energy to do this with you guys. So now let's take a look at going through the body graph from the perspective of what is it going to be like if you have one activation and the transit has the other activation because that's where I can remember any of these gate activations that you see in the body graph they're not consistently you so where I'm going to get most of the bang of for my buck as far as my energy output and helping you understand your own design is if I can com explain to you what it's like when you have one side of the gate of the of the channel you have a gate and the uh, trans um, transit has the other side of the channel so if I can describe for you what the homogenized way these gates show up perhaps just maybe you'll be a little bit more prepared for the neutrino stream for the weather yeah news you can use is why I'm I'm calling this that because I want it to be practical. How is it going to help the most people um, learn on not only human design, but also be prepared for what's to come? Obviously, I'm going to always uh, emphasize this, that the most important thing you can do is have your own personal strategy and authority in place because that is your umbrella, my friends. That is the umbrella that will protect you hopefully, for the most part, protect you from really being bombarded and pulled away from your truth. These energies that we are all being um, conditioned by or influenced by, we could say, the conditioning happens, just a real ba background here for those of you who are new. Conditioning happens, conditioning meaning adaptive strategies based on what your mind thinks about how it deals with what's coming in at it through the openness. These adaptive strategies condition us only if we act on them. So as an example, if you do not have an emotional system defined, but you do have a gate 12 or you have a gate 30, what may happen is you get touchy and nervous and you feel like you need to avoid confrontation and truth. So because you feel so emotional, you're moody or you're desirous and you feel like, well, I'm, I'm not going to say anything because I'm afraid of the consequences. Everything I'm speaking to right now is homogenized, um, expression of how the conditioning shows up. I'm afraid of the consequences, so I'm not going to open my mouth. I'm not going to tell the truth when the truth is necessary. That's the homogenized bullshit I want you guys to see happening to you based on the thoughts inside of your head about yourself. So that's when you avoid confrontation and truth because of either a transit activation or someone else, and you've got an undefined solar plexus, and somebody asks you a question, let's say you're a spontaneous archetype of what a generator is designed to be. You are here to be empowered. Okay, so that's your only definition. If you come to this place of, nope, gotta hide, gotta hide my truth, gotta lie, gotta avoid it, 
can't say my truth, can't speak up my truth, can't be empowered, can't go my own way, do my own thing, thing. Even though I have a response, I'm going to hide, I'm going to lie. Because if I say my truth, if I speak my truth, then maybe they're going to punish me for, for it. There's going to be consequences for it. That's the moment that you get conditioned. Okay, so the conditioning is not the transit moving through you and then we get conditioned. It is you behaving outside of the integrity of your form, your body. In this case, the spontaneous generator. I'm hoping I made myself clear there. I wish this was more clear in the beginning of the human design experiment. And I want you guys to be the best when it comes to being prepared you know, not just your umbrella type strategy and authority, which I laid out for you in that intro to human design um, free course that I created this week, but also so that you understand the mechanics at work and so that you don't berate yourself when you come to this place of, oh my God, I just avoided confrontation and truth. Shit, what's wrong with me? My friends, there's nothing wrong with you. When you find yourself avoiding confrontation and truth, recognize that that is part of you witnessing what's happening. And you witnessing what's happening out here in the openness is a rich place for learning and growth and experience and discovery in this life. Because once you are aware of the conditioning and the homogenized knee-jerk reaction that happens in your body, you are more likely to recognize why it's so important to respond, to wait for a response before you confront, okay? To confront when the truth is necessary because it truly matters to your empowerment. Your body has the energy for that. So I'm hopeful that that makes sense as far as how this works uh, for all of us when it comes to what is the transit doing? How is it showing up in our lives? You know, what is it that we can recognize in our own lives? That's what's going to make a difference. Everything for us is about awareness awareness and seeing and what we're seeing in this world are a lot of mistakes when it comes to materialism when it comes to money because that's the framework so if you've got a gate 21 21 hi i've got a gate 21 in the line three so i've got a fully resonant channel both lines resonating with each other because all third lines resonate with each other all similar lines resonate with each other so how can we experience really making money on this physical material plane that's what I'm learning about right now but what do I need to be careful of making promises that I cannot keep trying to prove myself in order to be the best right so over compensating maybe under promising, over delivering. Oh, I'm a sucker for that one. Learning about that one a lot in order to try and bolster my sense of self-esteem and self-worth so that I can, you know, feel like I'm important or I'm somebody or that I can make enough on the material plane. So watch out for that. If you've got a gate 21 or a 44 with today's transit, you want to watch out and you don't have an undefined or you don't have a defined heart center. You have an undefined heart center like I do. You want to watch out for the spontaneous knee jerk. I will. I have to. We have to. All of that stuff because that's not your authority if it's undefined. That voice of I have to, we must, we should. This is the world of the ego. This is the center of the tribe. The heart of the tribe is about stuff. It's about money making. It's about work. It's about dedicating oneself to the support of the others, whether that be your coworkers, your family, your friends, your church, you know, people like us do things like this. That's what you've got to be careful of. If you're an emotional person or you're a mental projector and you find yourself spontaneously promising and trying to prove and doing everything in your power to keep a promise even though you don't have the energy for it you put a lot of strain on your heart system on your immune system on your gallbladder on your stomach if you're making promises that you cannot keep so what I used to do in the beginning of the experiment I'd find myself all the time I will let me do that for you let me take care of that for you yeah we have to do this and let's go out and make it happen right because that's the deeply conditioned not self state of an energy projector like I am 
trying to make things happen, trying to earn appreciation, approval, and love. Total overachiever. Total. I mean, like type A overachiever. So what do we do? We sometimes, it flies out of our mouth because we have no choice sometimes. We just see ourselves, I have to. Oh, let me do that for you. Yeah, let me do that. I'll, I'll do it. We, do, we go, okay, if, we're, if it's not in alignment with our authority and we find ourselves spontaneously promising, do your best to say, oops, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, my apologies. There's this other thing that I already dedicated my time and energy to. You know, I'm a, I'm a non-sacral um, energy projector. I tend to overwhelm and overdo things. So I have to put up, put up some breaks, pu pull out some stops and go, wait a minute. Okay, I'm a little bit overwhelmed. Can you give me some more time? Uh, when do you need to know by? When can I get back to you? When does this, what is the deadline for this? You know, especially if you're an undefined root center person and you're running around like a chicken with your head cut off because you've got now this, um, maybe you've got the 32, 42 or the 30 or the 60. But if this center, root center, is undefined with this transit, now you've got a lot of physical pressure and stress to get things done. And not only that, get things done quickly. So you got to watch out for anything that comes in that feels like, you know, it rushes your adrenaline and that you don't have enough time to wait. Here's my example. This week we had a lot of challenges and upsets in our um place of a space here in America. And there's ta people talking about war. And here I am with my undefined splenic center going, I don't want to live in a communist country where there's war happening. I don't want to live here. We have to move in the mind. Yeah, my mind thinks inside of my head about myself. We have to move. We have to get out of, out of Dodge. Oh my God, I just spent all this money on this beautiful house. And now we have to pick up and move. You know, that's the mind, right? But Thank God I have my decision-making strategy because if I didn't know that I have to wait for recognition, wait for invitation, I might have picked up and moved to Italy. Back in the day before seven years of deconditioning, I might have really put, started to put that stuff into action. So we've got to recognize, okay, what is our personal process of authority? If your personal process of authority is splenic, then you can make those spontaneous decisions based on, you know, your health, based on if you're a manifester, what you can inform in order to impact, in order to know that you're, you know, going to be healthy, in order to move forward, in order to be safe, in order to be secure. But let's go back to this transit and talk about what is it like if you've got an undefined splenic center with this particular transit. So we've got one, two, three, four gate activations pointed at an undefined spleen, a totally open spleen, splenic center. So that means then that those of you who have gate 57, fear of the future, gate 44, fear of the past, gate 50 fear of responsibility and gate 32 fear of failure if you've got any of those gates now you have a channel and activation that may cause a exacerbation of the fears that are there within the splenic center meaning oh my god we're going to have enough material in order to get out of dodge my mind yeah my third my 44 going okay i know in the past things have gotten heated and you know in the past there have been wars there has been chaos and if you're not in the right place you might not survive so how are we going to be able to survive says my mind how are we going to get out of here so that we don't fail i just set up shop here i don't want to move and so the mind gets all scared. But oh my God, is it my responsibility? Says the, the gate 50. If you've got a 27 like I do, you don't have a 50. But you, um, you are always being conditioned by your mind thinking that you're personally responsible. Then you can maybe overdo it trying to preserve and protect your tribe. When it's, you have no job making decisions because of responsibility or the fear of responsibility. Now, if you do have a gate 50 and that transit comes in with the 27 as it has been, I believe uh, Uranus, which is unusual and it can sidetrack you. 
what can do is cause you to think that now we have to knee-jerk, spontaneous reaction, gut response to preserve and protect. We have to be responsible now. So your responsibility meter goes off the charts in your mind. This is a conditioning receptor if it's in your design, the 50. If it's in your design, conditioning receptor in an undefined splenic center. Now your mind thinks, well, in order to be supported and to support, we have to be able to be responsible. So it's my responsibility now, or you avoid responsibility. You have fear of responsibility. So you don't want to take on the responsibility. And it's just a, a total mind fuck. It's a total mind trip. If you have this and it's in an undefined state, this is all your mind is thinking about because it's a conditioning receptor. And where is the conditioning coming from? Hi, other side of the channel, from these gate activations that are there. Okay, so Venus. Now we have, I don't have gate 10 uh, at all in my design. So it, all of you who don't have gate 10 in your design, you're amplifying this energy from Venus, which is our values and relating. It creates the standards for our relationships. And now we have fifth line, heretic, heretic as a behavior. Somebody who is, you know, standing up on their soapbox saying, you know, this is the way, guilting everybody, this is the way, this is what I see, this is what I know, here's how we can rescue, save, fix, yeah? How, how, how my, I can be the savior if I could just have the right behavior. And here's your 57 if you've got it, thinking, okay, well, in order to survive, now we've got to make things more perfect. We've got to perfect our form. That's what has to happen. And what I'm, what I'm speaking to you from is from the conditioning, not self-state, remember, so that you can recognize it when it starts to loop inside of your head. This is a, a tip off, my friends. If you hear the looping, you know, repetitive, it has to happen, it must happen, it should happen, it's a constant yada da 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 inside of your head, that is, and it's in that same thematic of what I'm talking about, that is a big, huge sign because the voice inside of your head is not you. Ra calls it gas of the brain, like farts, like, you know, just something that is there and then it's not there, it disperses. It's not consistent, it's not you. And yet that little voice inside of our head that talks to ourselves that says, I, 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 me, 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 mine, mine, mine. I think this, I think that, whatever the case may be. It's always polluted with what's going on in the transits or in the people around you that you tend to be amplifying and therefore distorting. Now let's talk about the sacral center. If you don't have the sacral center defined, but you do have 42 or 60 or 50 or 15. What can happen with this transit is now you have a lot of energy, energy resources, the sacral center, the world of the generator. You have a lot of energy to overdo it. You, you be overzealous. You know, I have to do everything all by myself. If it's to be, it's up to me. This needs to happen. So I'm going to go out there. I'm going to work really hard. I'm going to make it happen based on this is how we we as in global collective we, need to do things. As a human species, we are conditioned from birth that we have to be productive, right? In order to uh, earn our keep or, or take up space, we have to be able to earn a living. You know, earn a living is, is over here as well, love of work, gate 40. But, you know, resources when it comes to um, being able to have more when it comes to our tribe and our society and be empowered and go in new directions. In order to do that, things need to get done. Who, get, who does the doing? If it's you, if you have a defined sacral center, there's a consistency and a specificity of what you're here to do. If it's undefined, all you non-sacral people, my reflector friends, my projector friends, my um, manifester friends, if you have an undefined sacral, and but you have these gate activations I just spoke to, what's going to happen is now you think, well, I've got to be in the flow, and I've got to preserve and protect, and I've got to be able to mutate, and I've got to get growth done. We have to have all of this, you know, cycles of development move, move us forward so that we can have new experiences and oh 34 sorry forgot about the 34 if you have the 34 then you might feel like okay now 
we can, I can follow my own convictions no matter what. So I have to be empowered and here's my behavior. Finally, I've got the behavior. I'm going to go do it because this is what, you know, you've got energy for maybe. Remember, if it's undefined here, you're amplifying and potentially distorting. So making spontaneous decisions based on a gut response, not trustworthy, not reliable. You're here to be wise about the usage of energy if you've got an undefined sacral, okay? Now that moon is moves twice in a day, so that's very quick. It's going to be gone soon. Um, Venus and who else? M Mars. We have Mars there. Have you noticed <laughs> a lot of energy to want to create order out of the chaos and limitation that's happening? What else? We have uh, Uranus I spoke about and yeah, we talked about 53 beginning things. So just to be careful not to overdo it, my friends who are non-sacral, because when ha what happens when the transit brings in either a channel or a gate that you have don't have but you have the other side that completes the channel now we have a lot of energy coursing through your system and what i notice personally as a non-sacral being is if it's the whole channel i can either be really amped up or i can just be wiped out now i have some health issues that i'm dealing with so that might also be um, contributing to that but just to watch out that you take rests you do breaks when you need it to honor your body to follow the body to pay attention to the body and not let the mind rule you, okay? Um, what else do I want to talk about here? Throat center? How about that? When you don't have the throat center uh, defined, you do not have a consistent way of, of manifestation, of talking or speaking. So what happens here when you have the 45 or the 10 in the transits and you've got a 21 or the 20, now we have a voice that wants to attract attention. So you might feel this energetic push to try and attract attention to something, either to higher principles or we got to make more money. We don't have enough money. There's never enough money, is there? <laughs> is there enough money to be safe and secure? If you research and you read into it and you really take a hard, good hard look at where our economy has gone here, nothing really creates safety and security unless you are one of those one percenters out there that makes a sh ton of money, you know, into the mind. I'm talking to the mind, the conditioned, not self homogenized mind, right? The mind always thinks, well, no, it's not enough. It's never enough. I don't know when enough is enough. I have to make more because if I make more, then maybe I can secure my safety and my survival if we have enough. But is it enough? Question. The mind will never know the answer because guess what? You're not here to have answers from mind be something that comfort or console you. You're here to shift your attention to the body. The body is the life. The body knows. I'm going to give you one of my most important discoveries that I found really helpful at the beginning of my human design experiment. I'm an emotional projector. Oh, by the way, on Friday, the moon's going to come in for just a, you know, half of the day and give us this channel. I didn't see off the top of just, you know, scanning very quickly. Any other channels come in this week? So just be careful on Friday if you feel very desirous and like you've got to have a new experience and you want to share your feelings or, you know, whatever. Lots of fantasies, lots of imagination. Watch for that. As a global conditioning pattern, that will be there. But what I found at the beginning of my human design experiment was this constant feedback from my body when I thought a thought that my body didn't agree with, I would get sad, I would get depressed. And there was still this shifting point within the first year or so where I still believed that the I inside of my head was who I was. And so when I would think negative thoughts, and so I'm a third, three, five, third line minds are really, really... Mm, beat themselves up you could say really pessimistic really downtrodden they really punish themselves when they're not awake and they're not aware and they're not uh, enlightened or enlivened by empowerment of making mistakes and seeing that as a benefit not as a problem or a challenge but as a, a way towards growth what i noticed is anytime my mind would think there's something wrong with me I'm not good enough. I'm never good enough. My body will respond with the deep depression, the depression, the deep need for deep rest, 
to sleep it off, to shift that negative and inherently disempowering self-talk. So when you think a thought inside of your head about yourself and you find yourself, your body sinking down, that's a sign that that is not something that's maybe necessarily healthy or helpful to you to put all your weight behind, to make decisions out of that negative and false belief system. Okay, so I hope that that helps a little bit, especially you threes out there who are new to the experiment. I've been where you are. I know what you're going through. Hang in there. It gets better. Now, one of the things that um, we talk about when we look at the undefined throat center, if you've got an undefined throat center in your design, you have an inconsistent way of speaking and acting. Manifestation, metamorphosis happens in spurts rather than consistently. Communication happens inconsistently. So what happens when we have this in the body graph is that now, and you have the 21 or the 20, you might find that you have more energy to talk about things. And what are you going to talk about? What voice are you going to use right now? If you have nothing else in the body graph to find, have. So be very, very careful of if you don't have the 45 and you don't have this G center or G center heart center defined if this is not your authority right here okay this this channel you got to be very very careful of what we have to do from the royal we you hear um, Donald Trump speak with the royal we he's got the 45 five leadership as his north node isn't that interesting you know direction his north node is leadership and um, my husband is that I know that a lot very well because the 45.5 is a leader born leader but when we're looking at this in the design and that's not you you don't have that 45 45th gate when you hear yourself inside of your head say have to must should promise prove deliver and that's not your authority be very very careful because that's not where you put your authority that's not who you are either for yourself as a generator or what you're here to do as a manifester to make an impact or how you're here to guide you wouldn't be a projector if you had this channel you know you'd be a manifester because energy to the throat so we we need to be very careful of what we hear not only inside of our heads but especially coming out of our mouths if this is not our authority process there's only three kinds of people who are designed to hear what they say from a place of um, authenticity. I should say four actually. To, but there's different processes of authority. But the throat center in itself, in and of itself, is not an authority. Where the authority is coming from is either the environment with a mental projector, the higher self with a self-projected projector, the ego or the willpower with an um, ego projector that's directly connected to the throat not going through the splenic center that's the authority or indirectly we could say but unless they have the the 45 that have voice i have this is a voice that says i have if that's not your authority don't pay attention to it and i think that's one of the most beautiful things i've ever encountered in the human design system was discovering that i had a voice and having your own voice be recognized as part of your authenticity whether it's your part of your authority or not you know to recognize to know to see to feel that this is part of how you express yourself and whether or not it can be trusted that my friends has been one of the most powerful things i, th I can think of in the human design experiment is to recognize when the body is speaking from a place of authenticity versus non-authentic, conditioned, and homogenized. And this is the big culprit we got to watch out for. We got to. We must. We should. Here I am speaking the keynotes. Can't help it. There it is. Yeah? This is my Venus. My values in relating is to be able to support my tribe. You are my tribe. If you're in this group, if you're listening to me talk, there's something in my voice for you to support my tribe so that you can have what it is that you desire on this physical material plane. And what I understand from a deep integral place within from experience is that money is not everything and it doesn't get us what we really want. However, it does make a big difference in our lives to have enough. 
and what is enough. Only your decision-making strategy will let you know that. Your mind will never let you know what is enough. Now, where I'm speaking from is there's multiple activations in the 41. I just want to highlight this right now because it's really important and key. Gate 41 is the start codon in our genetics. It correlates with the start codon. So at every beginning of every sentence, genetic sentence, that, you know, codifies our genes, we have gate 41 at the beginning. Okay, it's like a capitalized um, letter at the beginning of every sentence in our language. Yeah. So we have multiple activations here. And let me speak to it a little bit. I'm very familiar with this because this is my Mercury and it's also my Mars. They're very close together. That's why sometimes my mind goes faster than my mouth and I um, stutter or skip over my words a bit. But I want to I want to talk to you about this because this is so incredibly interesting to me that we've got so many activations in the start codon of our our genetics. Can you feel that something big is happening? Do you feel the shift? Do you feel the movement? Do you feel the energy? Do you feel the pressure? Do you feel the drive? That's gate 41. Gate 41 is called contraction. It's like pulling a rubber band back. You know, if you want to, if you ever wanted to like, you know, throw a slingshot or use a slingshot or, you know, you throw a rubber band, <laughs> snap a rubber band at a friend and you pull it back. Yeah. You hold it with one hand, use the other hand, you pull it really far back. That's what the gate of contraction is about. It locks down, it narrows down what we desire into one thing at a time, yet we have multiple activations here. Let's start with the mercury. Mercury is about communication. It's about how our minds work. It's about thinking. So if you don't have the 41 in your design, you may be conditioned to think about your fantasies. Gate 41 is a gate of fantasy. It's also the only love gate that talks about sex with love. Okay, so there might be a lot of desire coursing through your veins as far as wanting to have a new feeling, experience something deeply in order to learn, in order to grow. So we're talking about the energy for recognizing feelings here if you've got a 30 on the other side of the channel. Okay, so there's this energy that's there, maybe called out of you if it's something that is um, correct for you and your authority says, yes, maybe you do have some desires and some fantasies that you now share because this is what this thematic of this stream of energy is about. It's the stream that leads to progress and change. It's about feeling. So this stream of feeling that is conditioned by Jupiter and Saturn as well, a conjunction again, yeah, just like we had back in um, December 21st, we had it in gate 60. Now we're having it very, very close, not exactly conjunct, but very, still very close. Somebody's being born today with a lot of desire in their life. You know, somebody's being born right now with this energy or their personal law and protection, their personal rule to be influential when it comes to the desire and the fantasies that they share. And also to be constrained Maybe a hothead, gate 41, line one. My husband has this, uh, the hothead, the urge to release feelings. We see that we have it in the detriment where we have this foundation for the mind, our mind being built on this foundation of Saturn that gives us this energy to pull back, to draw back. I want to explain this a little bit more deeply for you. When you look at the solar plexus gates, we know that the solar plexus is about emotional intelligence and that it operates on a wave frequency. It has waves of either passion or need or desire. Yeah, Desire, passion, and need operate in waves. Have you ever had an orgasm? I hope so. Thank God. I hope so for everybody that you've had an orgasm. You know how that comes in waves? <laughs> That's a way to remember this. Yeah, it happens and then it's gone. You have, you have this long, slow build and then this climax and then it's gone. So that's how these energies within the solar plexus move that operates in waves. So what each of these gates in the root center do is it locks in the wave, it fixes the wave. So we're all being pulled back into these uh, conditioned by this, you know, rule. The transit is bringing this rule for a desire and this rule for this 
energy, this pressure to feel and maybe release some energy in terms of being hot headed, hot blooded, you know, desire <laughs> talking is a deeply sexual stream. If you hear me modulating my voice, can't help it. Why I speak the way I speak, I don't know. But that's, you know, just part of the name of the game. Whatever it is that I'm conveying to you, I'm doing my best to translate what I see in the body graph it, with my imagination to help you recognize what may or may not happen. Because remember, all of us have everything in the body graph. Even those of you with energies, and this is a common question I always get, you, you who have maybe this, what does it mean if I, my son is here? Well, then it just means that there's going to be additional, you know, energy that is there that may or may not be something that you notice in your design. If you have it consistent and fixed, it's just a layering on. It's an added to. Because when we take a look at the body graph, everyone has everything, not just the gate activations, but also the line values and the color tones bases underneath. We all have receptors to that. But bringing you back to the surface, seeing what's in your body graph, what's alive inside of you and how that might show up for you consistently in your life, that's what is most important here to base your decisions on the consistency of the energetics we can see in the design. Now I wanna take you back up here to talk about a very special gate. It's my one of my favorite gates. I'm so glad that I have it. Maybe it's um, one of my favorites because I do have it. It's my moon, Conscious Driving Force. And you can see that the um, Pluto up here is going has been going over my moon back and forth for uh, a good year or so more now. <laughs> it's go it takes like three years back and forth. And what we have here is the focus, okay, in a transit. It's about the focus and Pluto, when it trans, when it goes over a gate, it transforms a gate. Yeah. It's Pluto is about death and rebirth. It's this deep energy for learning and truth. It's your psychology. If it's in your design, Pluto is in your design, wherever you see your Pluto, that's your truth transformation and psychology. It's deeply transformative. And gate 61 is up here in a quarter of the wheel that is about mutation and transformation. So we have a lot of this energy, as you can see, coming from deeply transformative gates in the body graph right now. So much energy that is being transformed, so much energy, so much awareness, potential awareness that is being transformed. So if you have a 24 and you don't have the 61, what you might notice is there's a lot of looping thought patterns, a lot of mental pressure that you're amplifying and potentially distorting a lot of energy to lose focus. Oh, shiny object syndrome down this rabbit hole and that rabbit hole. We have to make sense of the unknown. We're pressurized to understand the mysteries in life. And I'm particularly excited to finally see uh, Pluto going into line five here. The pressure to know that may result in influence and wisdom. This is generational, this theme. So don't get lost or stuck or confused or depressed by not being able to know. Sometimes we just don't know. Sometimes this inspiration and these questions of big questions, the why in the sky, I like to call 61, cannot be answered by our mental processes. It can only be a body sensation that we can trust. Okay, now with going back to what I just said there, mental processes, there are two types of people, beings who have an outer authority, meaning their mental processes, if they're a mental projector, needs to be spoken with their trusted people in their environment, or maybe they just talk to themselves, but they have to have a process of interaction with the environment if they're a mental projector. So the mental process inside of the head about itself cannot be trusted. It has to be spoken, spoken word for the mental projector. And for the reflector, they have to have this process over their lunar cycle. And then they have this spoken word that, that feels like it resonates, like it's them. But for everyone else, we cannot trust the mental processes. You can see that from no energy connected up to the voice that says, I think, I know, or I believe. So that's where I'm going to stop for our transit look today. I hope that that's been helpful. If it's a little bit too much, you might want to start with the Living Your Design um, program. We do have two of them starting on the 
31st, I believe, one by myself and one by Peter Berg, who is a 3-5 Cross of the Sleeping Phoenix, um, pure manifesting generator, really strong design and has been designed for about 10 years. So if you want to do either of those, please do let us know. I can see I'm getting some direct messages on the site. Thank you so much, my friends, for being here. And I'm just going to check the questions because I see a Q&A and I want to see um, what I can answer for you. So Kathy is asking, how do these transits affect us if we already have them in our design? And Gabby is asking, how would it affect you if you have a defined spleen and the 50 but not the 27? So you can see that you're asking, how is this affecting me? How does this work inside of my body? And I gave you the homogenized version and how it's going to show up in your body, I can't judge without seeing the entire picture of the body graph. So I gave you a basis of understanding of by simply saying, if you already have these gates in your design, it's a layering on, it's an adding to. And each of you are going to filter that differently. We are all filters of the transiting program. The transiting program is what Ra would call the consciousness data stream that is made conscious by us. If we were to look at the entire solar system with all of its beautiful planets that are spiraling around our, our, our you know, beautiful sun, those gate activations that are within your body graph are planetary moments frozen in time within your cellular structure. And you are so unique and so vastly um, more than I can even comprehend and communicate to you, it would be impossible for me to answer those questions without seeing the body graph. If you want body graph uh, assessments, I am available in group. I'm, do, I'm teaching groups of Living Your Design, Rave ABCs, Rave Cartography, Living Your Design Guide to become a professional and also uh, analyst training if that's something that you're interested in. Okay, my friends. So uh, real quick, I just want to give you a little bit of a guidance looking at our new human design system. Again, we have courses that will be released as they, as I can figure out how this thing works. <laughs> I've, I've already set up the um, Living Your Design Masterclass. I'm just going to walk you through what's available in the intro introduction here. So give me one moment to get a sip of water. Okay, so this past week I built for you, if you weren't here at the beginning of um, my little session with you, an introduction to the human design system for newcomers to the experiment. Much of this was written for Jovian Archive back in 2016. And I went through and I modified and I added and I um, edited because a lot has changed since 2016 for me personally. I noticed there was a lot of um, up grades and updates to the way that I languaged things. But I have components here like what is human design? What can it do for you? Who is it for? Why does it work? Who created the system and where do I begin? That's a basic fundamental foundational own overview. I really recommend all of you go through if you are new to human design. Now, if you're also new to human design, you're going to want to know about discovering your body graph. So I talk about planets, channels, gates, and lines, the personality versus the design, the definition versus openness, and particularly conditioning what is the not self, which is what I'm mentoring you through in these live transit reports, doing my best to show you what can happen to you in your psychology when you believe the lies, the voice inside of your head about yourself. Because if you're using your mind inside of your head about yourself, there's always going to be lies because it's never, ever, ever truth. Because truth is a lived experience and the voice inside of the head is deeply conditioned by all of the openness in your design. It's deeply polluted, we could say. And then I have, sometimes I have little videos if there's something I'm particularly um, excited about sharing with you. And I might create more videos for this um, course as well. But there's also some interesting information about the kinds of definition. If you don't know your kind of definition, you're definitely gonna wanna check that out. And if you want to understand human design from a deeper layer as far as looking at the people in your life, that can help too. I, I cover your basic decision-making strategies. So this is where I notice, no, I don't know how to live it. How do I live this stuff? Well, here's something to get you started, okay? As far as your type and your authority. The most important thing in all of this is your authority. 
So I'm going to do my best to help uh, even despite, you know, maybe you don't have the money for it. I've been blessed with a lot of success in my life. This is a way of me giving back. So I'll do my best to give you more information as time goes on in this little course that I've created for you. We also have information about your public role or profile. I have some videos I created for Jovian Archive um, back in 2016 or 15 as well. So you'll notice the change in my voice as far as how I speak, because there's been so much transformation over the last seven years from who I was to who I am now. And you can hear it in the voice. And if you haven't heard about right angle profile, you know, left angle profile, personal destiny, transpersonal karma, this is a really fascinating place to spend some of your time. And then in learning to live your design, I'm walking you through, still working on this part, walking you through how do you do this, living your design. The first step is to get an overview, either with um, somebody who is a living your design guide or an analyst can give you a, a basic overview. If you don't have the money, mybodygraph.com is a great place to start where the first step is free that gives you an overview just as I've done in all of this coursework up here. But sometimes it's really helpful. Actually, I would say most of the time. It's really helpful to meet with somebody who knows about your design, perhaps even is living it, you know, somebody who's like you, as far as your authority, your type, or your profile, they can really help you. Because human design is a a spoken language. It's a rich lived language. It's not dead. It's alive and it's living and breathing inside of all of us who choose to study and master and transmit this knowledge to you. So it's really helpful to be able to ask your questions from somebody in person. If you're somebody who does not do well in groups, you know you don't like being sitting there in a group and you really want to get your questions answered fast, this is where I recommend that you begin. Living Your Design Awakening is a program that Raw put in place that helps you live your design. And that's something that we have a couple of starting at the end of the month, a live uh, program. And then uh, I haven't written this part out yet, but the foundation analysis, helping you understand that. You could just skip the overview and go to the analysis. If you're brand new, I wouldn't recommend that because what I find is it's really helpful if you're new, get an overview, or you can switch over into just going into LYD if you've done a lot of studying, living your design as an awakening program, and then get your foundation analysis. Because what that does is it allows those of us who are analysts to go deeper into the design from the perspective of the line values and what it really means for you. Okay, and then after you've done that, you can take Rave ABCs, which is designed to be a, a, an empowering continuation of living your design. So these two go hand in hand and they are, it is required that you do LYD before you take ABCs. And then if you want to become a professional anything, Rave Cartography is where it's at. If you want to use this system personally or professionally, that's a really fun place to continue on in your journey. Now, I added some frequently asked questions, and if there are any more frequently asked questions, I'll continue to post them here that are appropriate to newcomers. One of the things I noticed is, especially for me personally, I, I tend to share from a place of personal perspective where I've experienced this and I've seen it come up enough in my life that I recognize, hey, other people are dealing with this too. When I get beyond uh, this challenge in my life, maybe it's helpful that I just share from you for my experiment. experiment and experience because I'm here to change your fate. This is my life's work. I'm a change maker, third line, pioneers. <laughs> Pioneers tend to get stabbed in the back, you know, like they're going ahead. So, you know, when there's this uh, challenge or this problem or this, um, you know, negative experience, what tends to happen is we, we tend to blame ourselves rather than shifting and seeing what did I learn? So there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with everybody that you think there is something wrong with. It's just differences of design and people operating from not self or the conditioned mind, the adaptive strategies. I have some software recommendations, what to do if you don't know your birth time, how to find professionals and how you can help help others. And then there's this big phrase here, the elephant in the room. When you're new to design, you might not have heard of this yet. I know it took me uh, about a year and a half, maybe two years. I, I found it on um, social media. 
no choice, said the voice. And that one my mind grappled with for a really long time. I want to uh, highlight that. If you're ever confused about that, if you're, you're, especially if you're a professional in this, you know, any kind of human design professional, do watch that if, you, if no choice confuses you. Because human design is not about choice, even though it's about, yeah, make decisions according to your decision-making strategy. Choose to follow your response. Choose to follow your emotional clarity. It's confusing. It's a paradox. And it's something to wrap your mind around. So that's where I'm going to pause and just say thank you. Uh, Rose, this video will be on YouTube hopefully later today because it is time sensitive. So I'll do my best. But I have a class in an hour. So I need to go and get ready for that. I just want to say thank you so much, my friends, for being here. And um, I read off my Q&A. That's what I will do from now on, just the Q&A piece. So if you need anything from me, I'm so glad that this is helpful. Thank you so much. Um, please do know that you can see I have a lot of notifications on this platform, so many more on other platforms. I'm going to be shutting down other platforms within the year, I hope, if I can move enough of you over here where I can just do my work here. And you're very welcome. It's nice to see you all, my friends. Take care for the week. Remember your strategy and authority. Namaste. Bye for now.